Hey everyone, Richard Metal Fan here, still continuing the DSI discography, and today we're talking Till Death Do Us Part, the band's ninth album released in April of 2008 under Earache Records. Now, after their previous album, uh, The Sense of Redemption, that, like, this album is definitely a lot different compared to that. Um, of course, still with the same lineup with uh, Glenn Benton, Steve Ashim, Jack Owen, formerly of Cannibal Corpse, had joining him on their last album, and of course the late great Raph Santola. But this album sort of continues almost sort of in the same vein as Sense of Redemption, but definitely has a lot different things, a lot a lot more kind of doomy kind of parts, a lot more melodic kind of parts. Um, vocally, Glenn Benton, I just love his like vocals. He has some really sick uh, styles, like he goes from like the low guttural to the high kind of shrieks. Um, and then his bass playing i kind of wish was a little bit audible on here um the drumming from steve ashim in my opinion i think he's a great drummer like his the fills he comes up with is great um and then he surprisingly the a lot of people don't know this that he's actually a guitarist he actually contributed to some guitar on a few tracks on this album not a lot of people know that he also plays guitar too um and then the riffing from jack and ralph both of them come up with some really great riffs and just i I just think that just the guitar tone on here is pretty tight. So without further ado, let's dive into this album track by track. Now starting things off is, is the beginning of the end. Now it has some really sick guitar playing from Ra Ralph. Like he plays the guitar very melodiously. And I honestly don't really care much for like an intro because like both the first song and last song are called the beginning of the end and the end of the beginning, which it can be a bit lazy, but I kind of like the intro to the, the album, which is pretty good, which then goes into the title track, Till Death Do Us Part. Now, this features some really sick screams and some kind of guitars riffs that remind me very much of like doom metal, kind of like Black Sabbath or a bit. It's really catchy and it has some really good balanced drumming. And then the multiple vocals sound really great in the mix and the guitar solo on here is really excellent. Um, next up is Hate of All Hatreds. Now, this is a pretty solid song, but I just feel like the riffs on there could have been a little bit more catchy, which kind of makes the song quite monotonous, if you know what I mean. I mean, except for like the beginning of there, which is pretty good, but I feel like it just repeats throughout. Um, Next up, In the Eyes of God is actually a, a pretty good song. It actually redeems itself with some really sick guitar riffs and some drumming it's same thing with the next song worthless misery i think both in the eyes of god and worthless misery both of them come up with some really good good riffs in the riff department and i think, just think it's fucking brutal um next up is severed ties now severed ties now this manages to capture like the sheer brutality and aggression that was displayed on some albums like even probably my, the most underrated deicide album serpents of the light and it gives it kind of like a lot more depth and atmosphere and then the verse riff on severed ties is and certainly in my opinion one of the most heaviest riffs that the band has ever written in a long time but was sprinkled with a little bit of melody here and there to allow i guess the music to be, breathe a little more um next up is not as long as we both shall live now, this is a very technical track. It has some really sheer brutality a little bit. It And I just think the guitar shows sort of really great atmospheric like riffs. And the technicality is probably the best I've heard with the lineup that was on this album. And this song is just goes freaking ape shit in any way. And I think it's just a really good song. Next up is Angel of Agony. Now, Angel of Agony... He beats out one of the most longest songs on here. Here it has some really psychotic guitar solos, lows, but <laughs> I just don't know. It's just really good. Um, next up is Horror in the Halls of Stone. Now this, in my opinion, is probably my personal favorite off till death do his part. Right, and I didn't expect Deicide to write a long song. It's probably the longest song on here. It's six minutes in length. And given how like the band really much writes songs that are like short and sweet and to the point, I just think one of the main reasons I like that song really much, much just sounds amazing. It feels like there's like a story kind of like going along with it. And it's gives it kind of like a very kind of like darker tone to that. And then we close things out with the outro in the, the end of the beginning, which 
I, honestly, I feel like it, it, it's kind of unnecessary. I, I feel like they should have just ended with horror in the Halls of Stone and that's it. I just don't know why they needed, like, it, 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 okay, the intro was kind of fine, but the outro, I feel like, in my opinion, is kind of unnecessary. So, yeah. So, overall, Till Death Do Us Part by Deicide, a pretty good album. So, if I get this album a score, I'm going to give this a solid 8 out of 10. So, yeah, that's my review of Till Death Do Us Part by Deicide, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about it, and I'll see you all in the next video. And as always, keep it metal.